Um, I am pleased to be able to give you an update of some of the drainage research that is happening in Indiana on behalf of my colleagues Jane Frankenberger and Eileen Kladivko, as well as several graduate student colleagues, including Charlotte Lee, Amanda Locker, and Samane Sadat, who are here today. So you might be wondering about my title on postgraduate research, so um, wondering if I'm only going to present the results of postdoctoral research, but that's not exactly what I mean. The Indiana drainage research is in a period of, shall we say, more hands-off research. So some of our long-term field sites have been changing in recent years. So for example, um, Eileen Kladivko's long-term field experiment at the Southeast Purdue Ag Center has graduated the water monitoring activities, um, and so those were discontinued in 2017. Similarly, our controlled drainage research site at Davis Purdue Ag Center, we um, stopped monitoring that in 2017. And then a uh, two-stage ditch project that we had at Throck Mountain Purdue Ag Center also graduated in 2016. So this is what I mean by postgraduate research. <laughs> So, okay, that sounds a little negative. What I would like to leave you with is that this is not a bad thing. We're in a period where we now have the substantial data sets and we're spending time on quality control and analysis of our data to figure out what lessons have been learned from these sites before we dive into whatever the next great thing is going to be. So I want to share with you some of these analyses that we're in the process of. And as I was pulling it together, I was thinking, wow, there's a lot of good stuff here. And hopefully I did not include too many of the great things that we're doing. So you, know, you might have to cut me off. So I'm going to start a little bit with CPAC. Um, Eileen wanted to make sure that you all knew that she is going to go back and do one last round of soil sampling um, so that she can show the results of 35 years of a drainage treatment on this soil. Um, so you can see some of the things she's proposing, soil organic carbon, bulk density, water retention, and aggregate stability. Um, do you have any suggestions? If you do, for other soil health measures she should take on this site, then find Eileen during happy hour. Um, then we also want to continue working on papers that are looking at this entire 30-year data set for both nitrate loads, drain flow, and then some trend analysis. And I'd like to show you what some of that looks like. Last year at this time, Eileen shared with you some of this data, her 30 years continuous monitoring of the six tile drains at CPAC. This is nitrate concentration. Her first um, well-known paper looking at the first 15 years of this analysis showed the dramatic decrease in nitrate concentration tied with changes in nutrient management as well as the introduction of cover crops. You can see from the, the last 15 years, not surprisingly, that's leveled off, right? There's a little bit of an, a continued decrease in nitrate concentration, but the bulk of the change happened in the first 15 years. What is perhaps more surprising is the dramatic change in drain flow that has happened in the last 15 years. So the top blue line is showing per annual precipitation. Annual precipitation has been increasing. It's increased, the trend line shows about 15 centimeters over this 30 year period. But the, the bottom lines are showing you drain flow. The drain flow has increased more than the precipitation has increased. So the drainage efficiency or drainage as a ratio of precipitation has dramatically increased. And you can see that it's rather abrupt. It started there in 2000. We've spent quite a bit of time going through the data, and we are convinced that this is a real signal. This is not a, a data quality artifact. So that leads to the additional paper that we're working on now to try to really look at trend analysis of the precipitation data as well as the, some of the drain flow metrics to get at why this is happening. What I'm showing here is a, a mean monthly cycle of drain flow. The orange line is from the, the, the earlier part of the record. The black bars are from the latter part of the record. You can see a very dramatic shift in seasonality. There's a lot more drain flow coming out in the fall and winter months than ever happened before at this site. Certainly there's something going on with the climate signal at this site. But in addition, we've, I've been pulling out things, the peak drain flow rate over the 30 year study. And then I've averaged it by month. So these, the height of the orange bar is showing you sort of the, the maximum drain flow rate that's occurred. You can see that there's clearly an increase, and I've done trend analysis, there's a, an increase in this. This could be a reflection of increasing precipitation intensity, but based on my preliminary analysis, I really think that this is a function of increased drainage rate. Water is moving through the soil more quickly, getting to the drain more quickly, hence leading to a higher peak flow. All right, we're going to shift gears um, to look at our controlled drainage experiment at DPAC. 
um, that was graduated this year. And we have several ongoing studies related to this. Amanda Locker has a poster that you can go see in just a few minutes where she's looking at the um, impact of controlled drainage on crop yield. And in her figure here, the blue bar is showing control drainage in each case, and the gray bar is showing free drainage, um, and then dividing the, the yield by dry, normal, and wet years. Jeff was showing us some results yesterday. We've been talking about a synthesis study of, of crop yield and control drainage across many of our sites. And um, he was showing yield decreases in, some, in wet years in some cases. I think one of the fascinating things with Amanda's work is that she also showed decreases in crop yield in wet years, but you don't see that here. When she segregated the results by soil type, then you no longer see that decrease in crop yield. It's because um, the very poorly drained soils do much worse in the wet years, and there happen to be more, a greater fraction of very poorly drained soils in the controlled fields. And that was affecting the statistics when you averaged across those soil types. If you want to know more about that, you can see Amanda's poster. <laughs> so um, moving on to the water table, um, drain flow, nutrient work, some of these that have spent quite a bit of time cleaning up that data set so that we have 11 years of continuous data. And the night before we came to this conference, um, she resubmitted this paper to Water Research that gives the, the, the sum response of our, our nutrient load changes due to controlled drainage over the last 11 years. So this is her graphical abstract. So it was beautiful. You might not be able to see it from there, but I had to include it. Um, but showing one of the unique things about her analysis is that she analyzed separately water quality changes for low level of control during summer versus high level of control during winter clearly showing that for our conditions in Indiana, we can get greater water quality benefits with our high level of control in the winter months. So now that she's got all of that beautiful 11 years of data pulled together, she's moving on to extend her analysis using drain mod. Unfortunately, at that site, we're not able to capture surface runoff. So we have no observations of surface runoff. So the goal is to use drain mod to help to hope to be able to say something about not only the impact of control drainage on yield and drain flow, but is there a negative impact on surface runoff? Um, one of the unique things about her study is that she set up cameras, so time-lapse cameras for two years, taking pictures of the fields every hour. So you can imagine she has a lot of really boring pictures to look through, <laughs> and that's a slow process. Um, but she's hoping to use these as at least one way to help validate the model. So what I'm showing is very preliminary simulation from drain mod of surface runoff, and then the photos of the field from the times when um, drain mod predicts surface runoff, so she can look at the photo and say, yeah, there's surface runoff there, or eh, no, there's really not surface runoff there, so that we can try to pin this part of this missing piece of the equation down. All right, so I'm going to make you jump one more time to one more field site. And this was our two-stage ditch experiment at the Throckmorton Purdue Ag Center. So this was a shorter-term study, um, but we did have an experimental ditch. And last year, we had a paper published um, by Andy Hodai in Agricultural Water Management that really summarized the water quality impacts that he saw from that ditch. And even though this was a, a really relatively short section of two-stage ditch, it was only 600 meters in length, um, he did find statistically significant decreases in total phosphorus, total soluble reactive phosphorus, and total suspended sediment loads from that ditch. Um, not in nitrate loads. His concentration, nitrate concentrations did go down, but there was not um, a substantial or statistically significant decrease in nitrate load. Um, he also clearly found that the TSS loads got better as time went on in the early years of the experiment there was clearly still erosion from the benches that was counteracting the positive benefits. So he's also now in a period of extending that research, and so for that he was using the soil and water assessment tool, and so he's introduced an algorithm into the SWOT model to represent the two-stage ditch. And so this is just one snapshot of his results where now he has a tool that he can use to look at, um, in this case, different bench heights and how the nutrient reduction through the two-stage ditch might um, be different for different bench heights when you're going to have different interactions of the water level with the ditch. So now bringing together all of those field sites still in the spirit of that we're in the process of 
learning lessons and extending our results. Um, we are also in a position where we are using some of the um, data from these field sites, the lessons learned, so that I can try to take the information one step further. And so we've been adding a drain flow algorithm to an existing macro scale hydrologic model. So the variable infiltration capacity model, it's a very complex figure, but if you know Vic at all, everyone who ever presents on Vic shows this figure. So there you go. <laughs> now you can recognize it. Um, so this is a, a land surface scheme that's used for large scale prediction. And you may or may not realize that all of the large scale assessments you see that are talking about climate change in the Midwest completely neglect subsurface drainage, right? Most of the, the tools that are used for that analysis don't know that drainage exists. So our work has been to add a drainage algorithm to this model so that in future climate assessments, they'll know about drainage. Um, so the inset is just taking the data from our field sites. Now that we have multiple years of drain flow, this is just showing a comparison of annual average drain flow predicted um, by the VIC model versus what we've observed in the field so that we have some ground truth of this now new algorithm. And then that lets us do things um, like Charlotte Lee's work, which also has a poster on today. Um, so you can go see that in a minute. So in this um, map, we've got predicted depth of drainage um, across the Corn Belt. So we can start to look broad scale and make more sweeping statements about the role of climate um, and drain flow in our, our regional stream flow and things like that. And with that, I think I'll just conclude by saying, of course, there is other drainage research going on in Indiana. Um, Matt Helmers referred to um, Sylvie Bruder's work at the Water Quality Field Station. She was part of her, that study. Um, the National Soil Erosion Research Lab um, has ongoing field research in the St. Joseph River watershed, which I think was also mentioned earlier today. But I think that will do it for today. 